Okay, hi everyone. I'm going to call this meeting to order. Um, so, if we could all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <coughs> okay, um, Mr. Scott, if you could do the roll call. President. Uh, Ms. Oakley. Here. Uh, Mr. Miller. Here. Mrs. Bell. Here. Mr. Strobel. Here. Mr. B. Scott. Here. Ms. Leone. Here. And Ms. Olson. Here. We are here. Okay. Uh, procedures for public participation are on the board docs. Someone's getting to it. Um, they're all listed right there. Um, we will do, we do agenda edits before public participation. Yes. Okay. Um, let me um, add one quick agenda edit. Um, the, um, under personnel, um, 4B13. School board number one um, nomination of Ashley Godfrey from Region Three for the board. We will we'll get there, but um, we do have somebody who is interested in joining the board that's here tonight. Um, do any of the other board members or administration have any agenda edits? I, I have one under the programs. Okay. Could be three A. Two. Okay. Uh, and that would be a uh, recommendation that the delay the first two day of the school year from 2021 to um, Monday, August 31st. Okay, and that'll be um, 3A2, correct? Yes. Anyone else have any agenda edits? <clears throat> okay, seeing none. Um, um, time for uh, participation um, of the public. If you have any comments on any agenda items, anyone in this room, we'll give a couple of minutes or um, for for folks from another room to come over if they want. I know, right? <laughs> We don't have audio next door. If you can give us a minute, they missed the uh, agenda edits. Mr. Matt is working on it. Okay. So hopefully we'll have a couple of Okay. Okay. And wait at the door, and then it'll be your turn in a second. Okay. Is that audio? Is the audio on on that mic? Should be on. Is it turned on? Sorry. The mask. It might. Be. <laughs> I'm Amy Hicks. I represent the teachers of the Dan Boone Education Association. I just want to thank the board um, and administration. So far, this has been a very cooperative. Um, 
working together of all the stakeholders involved. Um, I anticipate that that will continue as we move forward. This is unprecedented, I don't think I need to say that, and it's good that we're working together and I hope that that continues. I can also say I'm not a scientist. I've only ever taught fourth grade science, so I can't um, uh, promise that I have all of the answers not being um, a scientist myself. I am very, very frustrated that these decisions are being left to school boards, and I don't mean that as an insult to you. I just mean that it's so widely different what's happening from neighboring school district, which is making it so much harder than for community um, and parents to kind of figure things out. Um, I think what you have before you tonight is um, three bad choices, and you have to choose the least bad of the three. Um, you know, opening in full, I just want to make sure that everybody is aware that if we open full for all of our students, we will not have social distancing. We won't have three feet. We won't have six feet. Um, we will minimize travel in the hallways, uh, but, and they'll be um, one directional, but it won't change the fact that we'll have most of our student population, maybe minus a third, um, within the buildings seven hours a day within an enclosed space. So that's not ideal. The hybrid option seems pretty doable in many ways. Um, we get the balance of in-person and um, the social distancing, but there are issues that have yet to be answered. We don't have space to spill over to. If we have to quarantine a classroom, where does that space exist? If we have multiple classrooms that need to be closed for multiple days, how will we address that? When we have teachers who need to quarantine, uh, for a two-week period. Where are those subs coming from? We can't get subs on a regular basis. Now, I think it will be substantially harder. And worse, when we have teachers who are ill and need to be out for even longer than a two-week quarantine period. So those are issues that we have not fully addressed with the high <coughs> model. Um, the red model, um, fully virtual, um, I think that's definitely our safest option, but clearly it's not ideal. We know the value of human connection and education and why, you know, that's why we do what we do. So again, you've got kind of three terrible options. Um, you need to choose the least bad one. I'm not a scientist. Um, my brother is. He's a PhD at the National Institute of Health in Washington, D.C., currently working on COVID. And he shared with me the sobering statistic today. He said that um, children 18 and under right now are being infected at a rate of about 7%. Of that 7%, we're looking at 1% maybe having grave um, health, um, conditions requiring hospitalization and less than 1% of those um, being deaths. When you think about that, not as a statistic, but as our children, um, our neighbors, that's a pretty sobering thought. And then, of course, we know how that um, is ratcheted up when we deal with all the other adults that are in the building as well. So I do appreciate um, that you're here. I don't envy the decision that you're about to make. Um, but I will tell you that DBEA, our uh, association, is committed to giving the best education that we can. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on up. Rich Martino, 225 West Welsh. We didn't have the audio on in the room next door. Were there any agenda edits about the reopening? Just one about the reopening. Um, we, um, there, on the agenda now, there will be a vote on the possibility of um, ex, um, ed, delaying. delaying the start of school <clears throat> to the 30th? August 31st. 31st. Because the Monday after All right, so, so, but the rest of the agenda is what was posed. Mm -hmm. Correct. Oh, well. Oh, there's one other agenda. And then there was one other agenda item. Um, we will be um, voting on uh, the nomination of a new school board member from Region 3. No, I'm just talking about the reopening. Yeah, that's no. it. You had voted to reopen in school with the option of virtual. It was published in the Reading Eagle in school with the option of reopening. Mm -hmm. Your agenda today says, all of a sudden you're talking about blended reopening. The, the um, X that's by there is, uh, this is this is the presentation that's being given by this, the school administration. It was their recommendation that we do that, do the blended learning when we actually voted for all five days. 
it is still their recommendation. That's why it's, it's, it says that in the document that we are voting on, but we may change that when we get there. Well, I, I don't know how you do that without it having ever been discussed in public because that was not what you voted on. We notified, it was, it was said in the last board meeting when we voted to go to school all five days that the administration's recommendation was that we go with the hybrid learning model. Right. And it is so still the their recommendation. You've got a lot of two family incomes nowadays. I don't know what you think you'd be doing to them where every other week they have to find daycare for their kids. That wasn't really the reason I came up here though. And this is not necessarily a complaint because COVID caught everybody by surprise, but your online education in the spring was worthless. My granddaughter's teacher got online perhaps an hour a day, read them a story, gave them assignments, and got off. So they were basically self-educated. So you go to any kind of virtual learning this year, which I don't agree with, I think kids that age need the social interaction, and they need a teacher who can see their facial expressions and body language and know if they're learning the material or not. But if you do have virtual learning, either by choice or because you force it, my question becomes, what are you going to do to ensure that the kids are actually taught, not what happens in the spring? Well, what happened in the spring was considered crisis teaching because it was last yes. minute. This has been prep tour over the summer, which is why we're asking for the delay in the start of the school year so there can be more in-service on the new setup, the new um, learning module online. So the kids would have a teacher start to finish? No. no. And um, I, you're, I'm sorry, your yes. three minutes are up, so I'm sorry about that. But um, thank you for bringing your comments to us. Thank you. I, I do want to say that, um, you know, I, I approached everything with the last year, last year of school. I, and I still approach it this way now. Our teachers, our students, our administration, we were all trying to do our best. You know, I, I, you, I feel that all of our students were trying to do their best, all of our teachers were trying to do their best, which meant that, you know, um, we should be willing to cut the teachers a little bit of slack because it's, it was an awful situation, and, uh, we, and the teachers in turn cut the students some slack. You know, um, I, I don't appreciate character, character, characterization of anything our students are provided with by our teachers as worthless. So. Hi, my name is Tabitha Temple. Um, I'm here because my daughter will be attending in person, and I have a concern regarding um, not needing consent to, for her to be a participant in the live stream. Um, I have concerns because she is a student with an IEP. She has I'm a student having difficulty time. hearing her. Sorry. Um, I have concerns with my daughter participating in the live stream without consent. She has an IEP. Um, I'm fearful that because she will be in the live stream, she it will be seen that she has an IEP. Uh, did, um, I, I, I really don't. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but did, did you send me an email right before yes. this? The, um, I intended to. I intend to email you again. The only reason is because the, what you what you're discussing it's important, but it's 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 um, um, some of the some of the details you provided me with. I didn't want to like go into them with in a group setting like this. Um, I do think that um, your questions are not. Um, I, I'm going to ask uh, Dr. Cooper um, to maybe address them a little more generally. Uh, general, okay. but. Um, if you keep your comments general sure. as, as much as you can, sure. if that makes sense, okay. Yes. Um, I think what it boils down to is my concern for her privacy. Mm -hmm. um, I was told that consent is not needed from parents for their child to be live streamed. Um, and I'm concerned that there's nothing stopping anyone from recording a classroom on their phone and posting it to social media or them seeing any behaviors and which can have social ramifications for my child and other children. So I think it just boils down to a privacy issue and a need for consent from parents. 
Okay, I, I understand. I don't know if you want to address the uh, live stream. The teacher has uh, control of the live stream and would be doing that for um, lecture type instruction. Uh, they can shut it down when it becomes a, a week where students are engaging with one another or the person at home in that model uh, engages in the work themselves. Um, it's not a live stream 24 seven, eight hours a day. That's not how the intent of this process works. Um, as far as videotaping from home, of a teacher that's uh, lecturing or doing a direct instruction with them on the screen to the students that are in class or the students at home, um, they would be um, videotaping that and that obviously has some implications with um, uh, laws, there's laws associated with that and posting it. So people who make that choice to do something like that uh, could be implicating themselves from a legal standpoint. Um, are there any forms that parents need to sign to say that they will not participate in that? Because I mean, we, we have, the district uh, the board does have to approve the ADP policy. It's one of those things we could take a look at and see what type of language is in there and, you know, work with a solicitor to make sure that we're, uh, you know, from a legal standpoint, within the scope of what we can control and uh, what we can control. Right. And the, and the last option is virtual. If you're not comfortable with it, you have the option of being virtual, so that won't be able to be happening. Right. Parents still have that decision to make. Yes. But, however, for my child, the best thing for her is in person. Um, she needs that structure, but I'm just concerned with the privacy, and I don't like that I was told that I do not need to provide consent for her to be on camera. I understand your concerns, and I actually agree with them fully being a teacher, uh, and I also think it is a tremendous disservice we're doing to our teachers by putting that pressure on them, that they're going to be in charge of, oh my gosh, Susie wasn't supposed to be taped, and now I'm like, like it's going to be monumentous. And my concern isn't in regards to the teachers. Um, it's just my right as a parent to be able to keep my child's day in private. And I feel that I'm not given that right. And that's my concern. So do I have, am I able to give consent or not give consent for the camera? We, we have um, in our EUP policy, without understanding what the details of our EUP policy are, they don't have um, um, verbal. <coughs> I don't know without looking at what it is, but I mean, we do have consent for um, students not being able to be videotaped. And again, the environment is a, a stream, it's not a live stream of a classroom where students are engaged with one another, it's the direct instruction part where the teacher is being videotaped of their indirect instruction. And it should not be of the classroom itself and the engagement between student to student. That was not what I was told in the email I received today. Um, yeah, we might, need to, we might need to discuss that a little bit more offline after, after the meeting is over. Because, yeah, so um, I, I have your contact info and I will get in touch with you, okay? Okay, thank you for bringing this to our attention. Yeah. Good evening. Um, Anthony Pomponio, 910 Maplewood Drive. Um, I think the one thing we all, all can agree on here, I'd like to echo your sentiments, is the school board, the teachers, the administration, even the students have done a tremendous job over the past six months. I think it's just <clears throat> phenomenal what we've accomplished to date. I think, unlike what was said earlier though, I think we do have three great options. And the one option of the brick and mortar is the option that I'm focused on. And again, I'm not a scientist either, but I do read to scientists and I talk to, to teachers and I see what's going on and I stick to the facts and I see that daycares have been open since June, no incidences of COVID, camps have been open since June, no incidences of COVID in Berks County 
and the information that's being floated out there, you can talk to an epidemiologist or a doctor and give you a complete different story of what was just said earlier. So I just want to leave it with that, and I hope that the school board continues with the three options that we presented, because it gives everyone a choice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Cockle? Hi. I know you've been waiting. I can. Uh, Shane Cockle, 830 Geiger Town Road. Um, my concern tonight is uh, we have a movement right now that's happening across the United States with the defunding of the police, and they're, they are now moving into a potential defunding of our educational system. The way they are going to try to achieve that is first, if we end up going into an all cyber, where everything's shut down, you're going to have teachers just say, we'll use foreign language as an example. You might have two or three teachers teaching foreign language. At home, you only need one teacher, and they could actually either be, they could be demoted to 60% or 80% teacher because there's level one, level two, level three, level four. Right now in our scheduling, at, in school, you have classes that are 20, some places 15, and because of scheduling, you have, you need multiple teachers to teach one subject. When you go all online, German one, German two, German three, German four, can be taught by one teacher. This is going to happen in your science classes, in your English classes. It's going to happen across the board. It's also going to happen with administration. You don't need building principals in every building. Uh, the custodian staff can be cut in half because you're not going to have anyone in the building. So once these people are either demoted or laid off, and just say this, pandemic lasts for two years. Who knows how long this is going to be? It could potentially get worse and worse and worse, and the amount of educators, it will be minimal, because one teacher can literally teach. In cyber school, they're teaching thousands of students, one teacher. So my question is, has anyone considered a plan if we do go into an all cyber uh, education system, what is going to happen with all the staff that won't be working? Will the taxpayers at Dan Moon pay their salaries? Or would they go on unemployment? Because a board maybe five or six or seven years ago could actually really do some finagling, and you'd have 25 to 50% less of your staff needed if we would go down in all cyber learning. Has anyone thought of that or had discussed it? Or your time is up, but no. And the, re the reason is because um, um, we, while we are looking at the fact that um, you're right, that, you know, this could this could drag on for two years, but you know I don't see what. It's hard enough in a cyber environment to control a, a, a classroom if you're doing it virtually of of 25 kids. You, I mean, doing it with a group of 50 kids. Ask my 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 son's college professors. Not easy, and um, so that was not our intent that we would still keep the same level of staffing per students. And also, um, there was no talk of ever furloughing those teachers in any way because um, when who's going to come back 
to this school, you know, after being let go, you know. Well, it has and, been done in the past. But, but, but <laughs> that was not, that is, it's, it has not been discussed, period. Okay. But I'm and saying it, it has happened not it, too long ago. Yep. And one more quick thing. Um, if, if you're going all um, online, maybe move your system back so we can fit more people in here because you have that whole back that's empty. Well, it's, to, it's the to, it's where we've got 25 people. Yeah, there's 25 people in there, and I'm in the band room. Yeah, I know. I mean, it's the, that, that's, the, that's, the state, that's the state maximum. Oh, so you can, okay, regardless of how many 25 people yeah. in the room. Right and when we, we did try to pull, the build, pull this back, but then those speakers give weird feedback because they pick up the noise. It doesn't from, matter how far, far we are. Yeah. Yeah. So auditorium won't work either. <clears throat> okay. Yeah. Thank you. We could have it outside with the football suit. <laughs> football. It's hot. Uh, thank you, Mr. Cockle. Thank you. Um, it, it, yes. Come on in. Hi, my name's Colleen Green. I live at 203 Woodbridge Lane in Douglasville. Um, I'm just not really sure what the plan is because. I teach in Oli, they voted tonight, they're virtual. Exeter next door to us is also virtual. Pottsgrove is virtual. I personally would love a hybrid. I'm a teacher, I wanna see my kids. I wish all of this would go away and we could just go back to normal, but that's not where we're at. So what's our plan? We cannot be the only ones in this general area to go back full time. We just can't. We're not. We're not. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then that's a, we're, we're, we're not the only ones going back full time. The, the, then why do we want to be the guinea pigs? You know, Twin Valley. No, 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 we're, 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 we're not the only school going back five days a week. It's right. For now. But my point is, why do we want to be those ones? Exeter's superintendent made a very lovely speech about that she didn't want her students and the community to be guinea pigs. I just think, why? What is the point? We are setting ourselves up for failure. What are we going to make in a week? I, I just don't know what the plan is. I think that five days a week in this world that we're living in is an unreasonable thing. Oli is very conservative. The parents are not happy, but the board made the right decision. Exeter, do you think everybody's happy with the decision? But you have to make the right decision for the time that we are living in. I would love for this to all go away, but here we are. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just for the record, it's uh, Conrad Weiser, Governor Mifflin, Hamburg, Muhlenberg, a couple of all of them. Yeah, all right, first. Okay. Um, is there anybody else waiting? Thanks. Oh, hi. Hi, Zoe. Hi. Zoe. hi. Um, um, start your timer. <laughs> um, Zoe Sweet, 1856, Old Sweet World. So, as a student, I don't know if this is the right time to address this, but I wanted to make sure I spoke before it was too late. Um, I am all in favor of going full back, and that's my personal opinion. And I know you guys have a lot of pressure from multiple different people on all sides of the argument. And there's always going to be someone telling you or being opposed to it. But as a student, going back to school is the best option for us. I know from my students, my friends, not my students, who had online school, it sucked for them because they didn't get the bullying they needed. And as a senior going into college, I feel like I need that experience in the classroom. I need that education. As elementary schoolers, not having that time to meet new friends, then hypothetically, if this is all over in a year, and they go back to school, they won't know the people, and it'll be so fresh for them. And so, personally, I want you guys, when you start to vote and think about this, to think of it as a student going back to school and how it affects them. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, um, seeing no other um, comments, we're gonna move on to the finance. I hear some, okay. Wasn't sure if they were coming. Yeah, yep, come on in. Come in to uh, make a comment? Come on in. Hi. 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 My name is Linda 
Perrins, the 106 Victoria Drive, Douglasville, Pennsylvania, of course. Um, I've heard the comments a little bit from the other room. It was kind of hard to hear. Um, I'm for the kids going back to school. Um, you know, you, you talk about the statistics, but for every statistic is, that is for not, there are statistics for. Um, I'm out of breath from walking from the other room. <laughs> Sorry. Um, you know, along with the, you know, it, it's a risk to go back because you might get the COVID. There's a risk to go back. Um, it is a risk not to go back. And, you know, you have children who get depressed. They get sad. They're not at school. They're not with their friends. Um, so every, for every one who says, go back, there are people who say, don't go back. Um, still at breath. <laughs> I'm not in shape. Um, but anyway, my question is, um, can you please consider just alternating the start times for the school, middle school and high school? I don't want to put my children on a bus um, because it's going to be like those crowded hallways that you see on TV. Um, I have the ability to take my sons to school, one's in the middle school, one's in the high school, and I can do that. Um, but I can't do that if the start times are at the same time. It only takes 15 minutes to adjust that. So if you can please consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry for being out of breath. Party 103 Balsam Drive. Um, I fully expect the board is probably going to end up swaying to hybrid. I understand what the woman said a few moments ago about all of us, uh, all the schools around us have gone virtual. And where she said, I don't want to be the person who goes to school, I'm uh, against that with, I want to go to school. I want my students to be, or my, my children to go to school, and I don't mind being guinea pig. Um, I know that many families rely on the school to be able to send their kids there for it so that they can go to work. I understand school's not supposed to be a daycare, but let's face it, people use it that way. They need to be able to work, and once we come back to work, they're gonna need their kids to go to school. We need to support them. I want you to look at the numbers. I understand that a lot of people are for a hybrid school, and those that want the hybrid school, I would encourage them to go virtual. Allow us that are willing to send our kids, or have the need to send our kids, send our kids to school. That way the classroom sizes are smaller. And if they're smaller, we can see how the effect of the students being in the same building will be. Will it be rampant? Will it not be rampant? Because we do not know. If the classroom sizes are smaller, we can have extra teachers, and they can take care of all the virtual students. So I think we should <coughs> encourage the hybrid, people that want to go hybrid, go virtual. Take the virtual school. And then let us that have the need or the desire to send our kids to school to send them to school. That's why I have to. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Shannon Samuel. I don't really like the public speak, but Neither do I, so it's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, kids education. Um, I'm a single mother. I have no help from their father. I've been working since this stuff happened. When the three, four months when they were home, it was horrible. They didn't do anything until I got home. I had to cook dinner. I had to do everything after that. The weekends, we did work for homework. So I'm just asking you to at least do the hybrid so I'm there, you know, they're at school sometimes because I can't do it again for a whole year or whatever. It's terrible. Um, and both my girls are in IEP because of reading and it was, it was, it's just horrible to be home, you know, a single mom with three kids. Two are in high school and one's in middle school. Yes, they should know how to do their own work. You know, that's partly my fault, but I need help from the teachers, and God forbid my kids do get it if they go back to school, or the teachers get it. I hope you feel horrible, but I just need help. All right, thank you.
Thank Sorry. You. No, it no, it's fine. It is Sorry. Fine. <laughs> Come on in. Hi, my name is Megan Hollins. I'm 18 Terry Court. I know a lot of you have already heard from me. Uh, so I'm just here to reiterate, you know, this walk before we run. The hybrid option is really our best option. Uh, it's giving students 10 days at home for any symptoms to arise. And I understand that there's parents that who want full in and say those of us who want hybrid, we need to keep our kids home. We all want our kids to have that socialization. These, these kids are starving for peer interaction. <coughs> I know one of the holdups last meeting was not being able to keep families together. Our school buses already run by neighborhood. If it continues to be the same way, there should be no reason to split up families. Not only that, but I know in my neighborhood, I'm getting a little nervous, sorry guys. Okay, <laughs> I know in my neighborhood, uh, you know, my kids, they already hang out together. So you're keeping kids who are already around each other and, and their families together on the same month. It shouldn't be that much more work for new roads or for Klein or the transportation office to continue with the runs that they have and just uh, tweak them a little bit. I have students in the primary center, in the middle school, in the high school. I have one with an IEP. I have one with a 504 plan. And I have a seven-year-old who bounces off the walls. <laughs> the kid needs peer interaction, but I want it to be as safe as possible for everybody involved, staff included. I am also a school bus driver. I mean, there's no escaping the kids on the bus. But I miss my kids like hell. I, I wish I could see them. Having some kind of normalcy is super important for everybody. And I understand with work schedules, my schedule allows me to be home during the day to work with my children. But this is a time where we need the community to come together and help each other out. I've had parents reach out to me and pose the option of, hey, would you like to work in pods? We'll get five or six kids together and maybe help each other out. And I think that's a very uh, possible option for, for families who want to work together and help out their community. Uh, that's, that's all I have to say. Thank you guys for being here. I know it's very crazy right now. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. <clears throat> Yes. Cindy McGee, 101 North Spruce Street. We're struggling to hear. We have no vid video over there, so if I repeat any other comments, I apologize. Look, you, you guys are in a no-win situation. If you want a 100% you know, safe way to do things, yes, online is the way to go. My, I personally would love my child to attend school because I really think it benefits him. I think our teachers are fabulous. I think the interaction does them well. I think he needs the structure. I think online really doesn't work for him, but you're in a no-win situation. I would say this. I'm prepared to, my send to, to send my child to school, but I would say other parents that are also willing to, you absolutely need to be sure that you're also willing that if one kid gets sick in your classroom, that you and your family have to quarantine if they stay home. So if you're gonna make a commitment to send your child to school, you also should make a commitment to stay safe if they are in contact with someone with COVID. So, I don't envy your decision. It's really a no-win decision. This whole scenario is a no-win. So, um, good luck. Thank you, Mrs. McGee. All right, thank you, Mr. Miller. Um, and uh, we had several people say, that um, they were having trouble hearing in some of the other rooms, and so I will do my part by speaking really loud. <laughs> I, um, so um, on to our first item on the agenda, which is uh, Finance 2A1. That is the that is the that is the um, other 
Yes. Uh, there is no 2A1 only. That's a cow. And uh, so finance is uh, 2A1 only. Do you have, do you have a motion to, to, for that? I'll give you a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any, um, I, um, um, just, just it, um, I don't know if Mr. Hurley is the one to speak to um, why we have a new vendor. <clears throat> Our security company, Energy Security, um, withdrew from the contract. Uh, they were not able to comply with state mandates, which are quite extensive in terms of training their personnel. Um, so in the end of June, uh, they sent us a letter withdrawing from the contract, so we had to reach out um, to numerous companies, and this is the most competitive bid that we have. Do the board have any other questions before we vote? Do Monetarily, is it substantively, substantively the same or is it a little more? It's more, um, they were the lowest bid we have. Yeah. The reason why the prices have gone up across the board in that is because of the training requirements. The training requirements. So yeah, they put more money into each person. Okay. Um, if I have no other comments from the board, um, can I get a roll call vote? Ms. Albright. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Mrs. Bell? Yes. Mr. Strobel? Yes. Mr. Scott? Yes. Ms. Leone? Yes. Ms. Olson? Yes. All right. I'll pass. Okay. Um, uh, next item on the agenda is programs. Let, let's take the, the agenda edit um, of the addition of the um, possibility of um, delaying the start of school. We'll take that separately. So let's go with 3A1. Do I have a motion before we discuss? And do I have a second? Second. Okay. So uh, I'm going to say things and then, and then, then I'd like uh, the, the board um, to each get a chance to kind of say what they're thinking about this decision and um, then, we'll, then we'll have the board like ask questions of the administration if, if they have any. Does that sound okay? Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, so the, um, the survey results, um, we sent out a third survey uh, two weeks ago, three, two weeks ago, and um, the, um, the survey results were less than, less than helpful in helping us make a decision, you know, whether or not par how parents feel is, is, is a is an ingredient to making this decision, but it's not the it's not the whole pie, you know, um, because there are other things we have to consider other than parents' preferences. But parents' preferences were 35% uh, roughly wanted their kids in school all five days, 35% wanted their kids in school on a hybrid model, and 30% wanted their kids in school um, on virtual only. So there you have that, and um, so. Um, Building's gonna take off, I guess. <laughs> and, um, um, okay. Um, so then, the the other thing that um, the next thing I wanted to mention before we start talking, there are new guidelines from the state that were released. Eight. You need to get closer to our mic. Do I need to get closer to my mic? Okay. Our sound effects. Is that better? Yeah. Sorry, guys. So um, guidelines from the state, um, new guidelines from the state on opening um, per county were just released by the Department of Education and Department of Health this morning at about 10.30 a.m. Um, where um, they have labeled every county based on several factors. The Department of Health has labeled every county as being an area of low transmission of COVID, moderate transmission of COVID, or high transmission of COVID, um, and has given recommendations for each of those. If your county is low, your recommendations are to, to have your school choose. This is not required, but this is, their, this is the guidelines, this is what they are recommending, that if your transmission in your county is low, you should have all kids in school, or you should have a hybrid model. If your transmission in your county is moderate, you should have a hybrid model or 
online only. And if your transmission in your county is high, you should have a virtual only. Um, so as of 12 today, Berks County, at the last two weeks, is labeled moderate, which means that by those guidelines, if we were to abide by those guidelines, we should be choosing a hybrid or virtual model, which is not what we chose two weeks ago. Doesn't mean we can't choose to leave it the way it is. It's just if we do, we are going against the state guidance, or the state recommendations. Guidance is different than recommendations. Um, third thing I want to say is that ultimately no matter what we choose today we might get into a situation where if we had all of our staff showing up to school we could serve the community and meet the social meet the social distance requirements of a uh, in a hybrid model but we might not have all those teachers come to school and may, we might have to ultimately decide to go virtual anyway so I just wanted to throw those three like actual facts. It doesn't have anything to do with how I feel about the situation. Um, so I'm going to put Bucky on the spot. Yeah. Okay. Um, I, I personally, do you want me to discuss what I'm going to vote on right now? Or? Uh, um, I um, <coughs> what I'd like to hear. If you're going to tell me how you feel about which way we should go, that's great. If you're going to throw out just all the things you're considering, that's fine. If you just have questions, that's fine too. I, I really don't think I have any questions. But I, you know, but my, I guess we, we talked the last time about going five days a week. Um, I, I we certainly, including all of us, have certainly received our emails and stuff from people. I think we're, we are in, I'll make this real pretty clear, I mean, I think we're in a no-win situation. I mean, I, 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 you know, I left my house, Kevin was asking me, I asked, I have three kids that are still in the school district, and I asked them, I walked over here, to, I'm not going to say what they said, but, but uh, they, uh, they gave me their opinion, you know, certainly, uh, so it, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, right. Get closer to your mic. Oh, sorry. Okay. <laughs> anyway, so long story short, I, uh, I think at this point I have an idea what I'm going to do, but I'm not going to say it right this second. But yes, I did ask my kids. I had three in this district. Um, I think some some of our emails had stated, you know, I think I think let me just say this. I, I feel like we're parents too here, and, and some of these emails that came through were pretty strong, and and I kind of like to say that you know. It wasn't necessarily fair. We're here every other week. We volunteered for this position. We're trying to do the right thing. I used to sit right out here with with the uh, with the audience and and see how boards deal with stuff. I think this is a board that really considers things through and through. I, I don't really have much else to say. But, but. Thank you, Bucky. Um, Beth, Mrs. Albert. Yeah. Um. Microphone. Um, I have gone back and forth as, as everyone else, I don't need to reiterate that. Um, I see everyone's side, I actually do. Um, some people said that I was uh, selfishly choosing an option, and that may be correct, but I have four children in the district, and they're in high school, and the intermediate center, and the primary center, and I feel they're representative of, I'm an average family, I'm a representative of, of a lot of families. Um, and last week or two weeks ago, I voted to go back fully in person. I think it's the best for kids. I'm a teacher who has the best for kids. Um, and just because I'm saying I, I want to go back, it doesn't mean that I don't believe COVID is real. I had somebody tell me that I, I don't believe that it's real, it's happening. Um, it just means that I choose to prioritize and act in fear and I'm willing and my children are willing to go to school, and I think that's what they need to do. Um, I will never advocate for virtual. I think it's a horrible choice. Um, it will be much better than it was in the spring because we have a totally different platform, but I just don't think that kids need to be online any more than they already are. 
Mr. Sherwell? It's a challenge to uh, sit here. I have a senior this year as well. And it's a challenge to uh, think about this. All this has been thrown at us since last minute. Any school jurisdiction can tell me that they were prepared for what happened is not telling the truth. And I think we did a great job last year. I think the administration and teachers did a phenomenal job last year for what they were given. Um, last time we were in this room, we thought the hybrid was the middle of the road because it gave some socialization. It also gave some separation. It was a crawl, walk, run mentality. Um, and it gave the option for people to get full virtual if they wanted to. But at least gave some face-to-face -face, um, at the time. Um, we all voted. I was accepted that we were all going to go back. Where it goes tonight is still to be determined. But there's challenges with all of it. I think this last piece that we got handed today to the Pennsylvania Department of Health is a challenge for everybody um, to sit on you know, their, their, their recommendations um, are important. Um, so um, that's really, it's a, just a tough choice. I'm not going to go that. Ms. Bell? I, too, voted for a full return during our last meeting. Um, I still would prefer that, but based on the guidelines that were issued today, I believe we have to follow those. Do not, I will never think that it's okay not have kindergartners, young children on uh, trying to do uh, a virtual learning. They're not, it's not effective for them, it's not going to work. Um, and I also think we need to consider the other taxpayers in the district. So it's not a daycare, but society depends on Monday to Friday schedule. And so that's important in my decision as well. So if I am going to go with the recommendations of the state, I would go with the scaffolded hybrid model K through five, one through person, and the high school and middle school are what? Thank you, Ms. Bell. Um, Ms. Leon? So I think I'd love to reach out to um, some community members and get some feedback from them. And um, I've got a very high percentage of people that were looking to go back full time. And there was definitely a very low percentage that was looking for all the virtual. Um, and it was kind of in the middle, a little bit lower, but in the middle for um, the hybrid. Um, I just have some concerns with the hybrid and the virtual in regards to um, my background in, in behavior supports and um, special needs. Um, that's my background is in, that's, that's what my job is in. And I, I have a real concern for some of those special needs children um, and how this is going to affect them if they're kind of back and forth and the routine is off or if they're all in virtual. Um, so that's, that's a big concern of mine. I know that's a big concern for a lot of people we heard today as well. And like everybody said, this is kind of a lose lose situation no matter what we do. It's going to be difficult for somebody somewhere. So, Mr. Miller. Okay, I get to go last. Um, no, I get to go last. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, it's clear that the community is split. Um, by this, but, you know, there are many different opinions, and there are many different opinions even from the medical community and from the guidance that's been given from the state and the government. So. I, too, feel strongly that it's really need to be in school if they can. And that's the first addition forward, but it, it needs to be done safely. So what's the best way to do that? I, mean, I agree, a, a form of hybrid at this point would be a way to get back into you know, going to school again and seeing how it works. The best way to do that, I mean, it, obviously, it's the younger kids that really need to be in school more. And from the statistics we've seen, they generally are less infected. But, you know, that is changing as all country items. It's one of the thoughts is that younger children are not susceptible and don't transmit as well. So I, at this point, I would be able to strive for this. Thank you. Mr. Sherwell? Thank you. Um, I just wanted to make sure that you know, your three minutes are up. 
All right, first I wanted to say something. I had a couple, I heard a couple of board members mention um, that um, they heard some um, less than constructive feedback from the, from the community. Um, and, you know, as I said before, you know, the same thing that I said about the teachers and the parents and the students just trying to get through this and do our best, do their best. I have felt nothing but that from this board. I think we are trying to do our best. And um, the, uh, the, the, the level of ugliness I saw over what is agree, which, which I totally agree, is a very impactful decision to every family and every teacher. Um, it, um, you know, every single one of us up here either was appointed to this board or ran unopposed. And when I saw the level of vitriol, I, I can see why. You know, it's not a fun job. If I, I don't whine too often. I don't care what people say about me, but I care what people say about the rest of the board. And I didn't think it was fair. And I didn't, I didn't think it was warranted. And, you know, take that for what it's worth. Um, so, I have a hard time, um, I'd have a hard time supporting a move to hold school five days a week just because it's in, it, it contravenes the, the state's, the state's uh, uh, recommendations. I, I think that um, that leaves us in a situation where um, if we're not following the best recommendations that the state's putting out, even though you know we can argue about whether or not it's the best recommendations they can put out when they put it out 10 hours ago, you know, um, if we're not following that, I don't. Th I think we're doing a disservice to the teachers that count on the Department of Ed to um, take in the the. Um, the interest of all stakeholders when they're when they're sending out those recommendations, and I think that um, we are opening up our school district to potential liability issues to not to not go with their recommendations and by at least choosing a hybrid option. Um, I did, um, someone else mentioned earlier that you know um, I, I said this to another board member. Just the other day, I don't, just like I didn't want to be on an island being the only school district offering um, online only, which was definitely a possibility four weeks ago. I don't want to be on an island only being the only group offering five days a week. We're not, but it's getting close. The island's getting awfully small at this point. There's only four other schools on that right now, and, they're, and some of those schools are voting to reconsider that based on the recommendations that just came out for our county. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to say. I do, I am moved by the fact that perhaps a scaffolded model might be what we could, what we would be able to, where, where the young, where the young kids, um, K through five, could be going to school five days a week and um, older students would be going to school every other week and doing their online. I, I could see that being okay if it meets the requirements of the recommendations. I'm not 100% sure if it does, but if it does, that'd be fine knowing that we might have to make a change if we can't, if we can't stack it. And I don't want to leave our teachers and our administration in a situation where we're constantly like tweaking their objectives and moving their goalposts so that um, we're setting them up for failure. I don't want to be in that situation either. So, does someone want to make a motion for any of the four options? Don't all jump at once. I'll make a motion for the hybrid, which I think is number, do you call it number Hi two? All hybrid, all hybrid or scaffolded hybrid? Scaffolded. 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 Scaff
always K through five in person and middle school and high school hybrid. And and hybrid is everybody going to school every other week. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, we can talk here, right? I mean, yeah, so, go ahead. I didn't. Yeah, like I, I must have missed that that particular one. Why don't we Why don't we make a motion for what we already agreed on? See if everyone's still on that same page, and if not, then we'll then we'll move on. Fair enough. Do you want to make? So you want to make a motion for five day? For all five days? I can help you out here. <laughs> you're making a motion for you're making a motion for the plan with all five days. I am making a motion for five days in person. And do I have a second for that? Okay. Can we have a vote? What is the what is the motion? All five days. What we had last two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Of course, if we don't change anything, it's really hard. It's really hard. Let's narrow it down. Let's narrow it down. Well, you can't. Okay. You can't. You don't vote on something else. You haven't gotten rid of what we've already voted on. Yeah, I get you. I think we all get you. I hope so. Wait a minute. Who is second on that motion? Mr. Strobel. Oh, no, I'm sorry, Ms. Leone. Okay, Ms. Leone. Yes. Yes to that. Okay. Ms. Albright. Yes. Mr. Miller. No. Mrs. Bell. No. Mr. Strobel. No. Mr. B. Scott. No. Ms. Olson. No. Four no's, two yes. <laughs> Right. Can I make a motion? You can. Yeah, with a hybrid. Okay. Oh, actually, no. We should probably have the motion and then we'll move on to discussion. So, yeah. motion for scaffolding. And I will second. And um, if we want to have some discussion on that before you vote. Go ahead. In our earlier meeting, the was yeah, because the concern is that if you vote for something in tonight, and we did it two weeks ago or a week ago, and then the administration has to run towards that goal, mm -hmm. that's the option they have. And then it changes, and then we're here, and they got to run towards another goal. And we, we already know that there's a strong potential, based on our conversation, that we're not going to have enough staff to support that model. So we can vote on that now. And that's one of the reasons they made the, uh, the recommendation, the administration made the recommendation to go through hybrid because they felt that there was the safest model and there's the best opportunity to be able to staff it. If we can vote on this tonight, if they can't staff it, we're going to have to just, if we vote tonight, we can't staff it a week from now, we find out they can't. Mm -hmm. change directions. Yeah. But there's, 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 we could change directions to our rights of nature of this disease, unfortunately. I do have a question. You said there was a strong probability. I, I, I'm not sure I heard that. I heard there was a possibility that we wouldn't be able to stay. There's always, there's, there's always a possibility we won't be able to safely stay at the bottom. Right. But it is a, it's a trouble characterized as strong. That's the impression I got from it. So by, by intention, I did not intentionally use that word. Huh? I, 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 I've never given my opinion. I love that model. The best one. I just want to make sure that we're right to get the children in safety. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think it's important. Model. Sorry, Mr. Show. I think it's important to understand that um, there there are issues in, in individual circumstances in any you know any uh, employee employee situation, regardless of what uh, what field you're working in, that may uh, prevent employees from returning to work. Sure. So I think you know that that's always got to be in the back of back of our mind and you know, we are an employer mm -hmm. as well for our professional staff, support staff, administrative staff and so forth. So that's, that's just you know a comment that I want to out there. Okay. I do want to say like one thing that concerns me about the scaffolded is um, the, uh, my understanding is that our concern of um, certain some people that may not want be able to come back to school 
are from all grades. It's not just it's not just the middle and the high school. Um, so we could be down some teachers at least for the fir first quarter or so. You know, some 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 teachers are parents of kids who are in other school districts who have online, and they, they don't they don't have the op they they won't have the option to come to school. Um, and so we have to figure out what to do there. If we have a, if if we have roughly a little less than a third of our class of our kids in the elementary school that will be doing an online option. Um, we could have classes if they were all if they were all there every day. We'd have classes where those those classes would be like 14 to 16 kids every day. Um, if they were every if we were having those kids there every other week, that would be closer to eight children. Um, we might have fewer teachers with reservations about coming in due to social distancing issues. It's a big difference. Um, I, I know that that might not move other members of the board because it sounds like I'm just trying to second guess and like try to solve problems before we know what we have. But I am as I, mean, I am concerned, as uh, Mr. Strobel had said, about offering direction and then having to stop and turn around constantly. Um, we could always, after a month, if things are going well, step up to f five days a week for elementary school. We don't know what the new school is going to look like. I'd be much more comfortable with a hybrid model than scaffolded model. I'd, r I'd rather, I'd rather, I'd rather err on the side of caution, not, not zero you know, n not, not incredibly low probability of contracting COVID because no one's in the building, but significantly reduced because there's half the number of people in every building all the time. Um, does anybody else want to uh, talk about scaffolding before we vote on it? I think that for the kids, in those younger grades, those are times when children are learning the social and emotional and those basic foundations of their education, which is going to be very hard for a parent to teach at home. I'm not a teacher. That's not what I do. That's not what I was instructed in. That's not what I went to college for. And so I know even for me, and I know a lot of other people here, that's going to be very difficult in those younger grades. Older grades, they can kind of take that direction, direct it a little bit easier. But those younger grades, especially kindergarten through fourth grade, they're learning those basic foundations that they need to have be taught by a teacher that's educated to them. And I think that, you know, I, I really wanted full in school, but uh, at this point, you know, I think it's happening is the best, best, next best option to them. One of the things I want to uh, want to say and be clear that the in-person environment that we are discussing in, in Having a conversation about is not that of which our students experienced last fall pre COVID. Um, with some mitigation efforts that we have in our health and safety plan, uh, the, the social distancing where feasible to the extent possible, uh, the students lined up in rows, less engagement with peers in a collaborative environment will be prevalent. Just, just so we're clear, it's not an in-person environment that we may have been used to uh, in advance. Any other comments before we vote on scaffolding? I have a question. Mm -hmm. It's directly to you with the administration, but which is the plan, because I'm confused, which is the plan that you're recommending? This plan, the scalping? Our, our recommendation uh, is the hybrid tabletop model, which was the initial recommendation two weeks ago. Blended. He's, he's talking about blended. blended. We're talking about scalping. Okay. I, I got that now. I just. <laughs> that just means take group. Right. Five all the time. Six through twelve. 
movement yes. for, and the virtual option is different for everybody. As well. Correct. Correct. And also the virtual option. Correct. Virtual is, is available in, in all those options. Scaffold is A5 in person, 6 to 12 in a hybrid environment. The one that uh, we recommended two weeks ago and is the same one we recommend now is the hybrid A12. Feel as though that that is the safest option at this point in time for all of us. And for the K through what? Five. I don't know, but the, the scaffolding version. I, uh, and again, it's, it's difficult to right. uh, promise the social distancing, but in a uh, yeah, uh, hybrid model still a 50 percent students A and B, we have a better chance to make that happen than we do with an online person. Okay. Sorry, that was no, yeah. no, it's fine. Thank you. Are we ready to vote on that? Okay. Um, we're gonna vote on the scalp Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Miss Aubrey. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Ms. Bell. Yes. Mr. Sherwood. It's the model that I want from the administration. I'm going to say no. I'm going to say no. Ms. Scott. Ms. Leone. Yes. Ms. Olson. No. Motion passes. Motion passes. All right. So, so we've just voted to go with a scaffolded model, which would mean kids K through five would be in class five days a week, and kids six through 12 would be in school Monday through Thursday alternate weeks, and the other six days, both Fridays and the other Monday through Thursday would be doing uh, virtual learning or, um, or assignments at home. Um, and uh, yeah, we, I mean, the administration still has staffing concerns. Um, so um, it, it, they, they will keep us apprised and we will keep you apprised of where we are. And, but that's, that's the administration's recommendation. Um, I mean, that's, the, that's the board's vote um, is uh, to go with the scaffolded model. And Madam President, we will update the uh, plan and reflect that vote and right. resubmit to the Department of Ed as per uh, requirements. Okay. There's also some uh, minor details that have to be uh, adjusted in the new plan. So. Okay, and then the next thing is the added item uh, um, 3A2 to, um, to ex. Um, um, delay the start of school until August 31. Uh, do I have a motion for that? Motion. And do I have a second? Okay. Um, so um, just for everybody assembled, the, um, the, the reason for this is, um, is uh, we have a lot to do <laughs> and um, um, we'll be um, um, offering the uh, teachers some um, extra professional development before school starts. Um, um, I don't know, do you want to get into the details of what some of that's comprising or are we good? Yeah. Um, so, um, do any of the board members have questions about the extension of, I mean, the delay of what starts school? How does that affect the end of the year? Oh, um, if we vote yes to, um, we, will, we will have a new um, we will have a new calendar um, at the next board meeting to, in two weeks to see. It shouldn't affect it much because. Say, like, what it does is. Yeah. Have to make it, so pretty much it puts student service days that are already scheduled in the calendar and on October 1 in December, or I'm sorry, 1 in November, and it moves them to that, uh, yep. that week before. So those days will now be in person days for our students. But we, but we will have a calendar to vote on next in two weeks. Okay. So to be clear, the first the starting day of school will be August the 31st. 31st. All right, Monday, August 31st. And uh, um, with no other questions, can we have a, a voice vote? All in favor? Is that okay? Sure. All in favor? 
Aye. Any opposed? Okay. All right. Um, can I get a um, motion for personnel for a? Yeah, for a of uh, uh, one, I guess. Still have the second. Yeah. Any any discussion on that? Yeah. The, I'll get to the reason why in a second. Okay. We're just doing a. Okay. Any discussion before you vote? <clears throat> can can we get a, a vote? It's all right. Sorry. Yes. Mr. Miller? Yes. Ms. Bell? Yes. Mr. Strobel? Yes. Mr. Pete Scott? Yes. Ms. Leone? Yes. Ms. Olson? Yes. Yes. And um, can I get a vote for um, a, a, a motion for 4B1, four 1, one and 2? I was going to Oh, Ms. Bell. <laughs> No, that was Ms. Albright. Ms. Albright, all second. Um, any any discussion on those two appointments? Can I say that I'm super excited about it or not? Yeah. <laughs> Are you out of line? <laughs> Can we uh, um, get a vote if we if we're if this there's three, two. Four. Uh, four B one one and two. All right, uh, Mr. Miller. <clears throat> yes. Mr. Bell. Yes. Mr. Strobel. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Miss Leone. Yes. Miss Albright. Yes. Miss Olson. Uh, yes. Um, let me just say, um, Mrs. Ms. Wendy Sweet is here. And congratulations on your new position. Uh, she's uh, worn many hats in school over the years. Um, now we're going to move on to the agenda edit. We're going to move on to the agenda edit uh, personnel appointments A four B one three, which is uh, the um, appointment of a new. School board member Ashley Godfrey. You know, do I have a motion? Make that motion. Got a second? Second. Oh, Ms. Bell. Yeah. Ms. Godfrey. Ms. Godfrey is here. Hi. Hello. It's your, it's, it's, now it's time to come to the podium. <laughs> I uh, let her know that if she had any prepared comments, she could make them, and then um, if we had any questions, we would ask them. I just have a, just quickly, um, my name is Ashley Godfrey. I've resided here in the for over five years. Um, Beyond being a resident, I also have four children in the district. A new kindergartner. No, it's okay. Oh. He's going to check you out. Sure. All right, sorry. <laughs> I have a kindergartner, a second grader, a fifth grader, and a new seventh grader. Um, my motivation for joining the board is not only to enrich my children's lives and be positive in the community, but also to be there for other families. Does anybody else have any questions before we vote on her appointment? Do you have any questions before we vote? You're, you're the only candidate, which which makes which makes this a, this this interview a much much more limited prospect. Um, um, so do we? Um, can we have a can we have a vote? Okay, thank you. Yeah, go ahead and sit for right now. <laughs> Might be uncomfortable. Mrs. Bell. Yes. Mr. Strobel. Yes. Mr. Scott. Yes. Ms. Leone. Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Albright. Yes. Mr. Miller. Yes. Ms. Olson. Yes. Seven yeses. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, while we are still in session, um, I'd ask you to come and um, we'll. One of you give her the oath? Here. Can you give her the oath? Um, Can you give her the oath? Um, 
Yeah. What's that? Oh. Oh, okay. Can we give her the oath at the beginning of the committee of the whole? Yes. Okay, so we are going to adjourn um, at the end of this meeting, and uh, you will be sworn in at the beginning of the committee of the whole, which is still like just five minutes away. All right. Um, presentations by the public on issues um, from this room or any of the other rooms. I'll give people from the other rooms a couple minutes. But this, but right now, this the page that this that the Department of Education has put out uses the words interchangeably. But yes, there is a difference. Um, um, <clears throat> guidance is a stronger term than recommendation. Um, but in ne in neither case did the state say that like our funding is in jeopardy if we do one if we don't do what they say or anything like that but they could theoretically do that if it's guidance and not recommendations it's pretty clear. It said it wasn't a mandate right it, it wasn't a mandate it was not, not a mandate. mandate it's not a mandate but it's so it's a recommendation like so so you so we took it into us we took it into account okay. when we were making our so decision my understanding and it seems like there was some confusion even with a couple of you guys, the scaffolding versus hybrid. Mm -hmm. So the hybrid is what Dr. Cooper recommended. No, there's two versions of hybrid. There's two, that's the problem. He recommended what we used to call the blended version, which is everybody does the same thing. They go four days, they're off for 10 days. Okay. We went with the scaffolded version, because we like to go against it. That's a little bit, but the K through five goes all the time, five days a week. Right. So, but that's against Department of Education, uh, Department of Education's right. recommendation slash guide. Yes. Guide. Well, right. that's to be determined. Right. They, 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 they use the term. Well, they use the term hybrid, and they don't. So define you guys it. are voting on something that potentially is can't be voted. You mean you mean that we are voting on something voting where, where on. we might if we get clarification? So you're voting. So you get you guys sound like you want to follow guidance and recommendation from the Department of Education, but then you vote for an option that's not included. We are not. No, it's uh, there's two hybrid options. The city said hybrid. 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 So what, how does the state define the two hybrid models? They haven't. They, they haven't yet. They really have not defined, and uh, they have not defined, they use the term blended learning model. Okay. So a blended learning model can be a combination, uh, and we use, it, we use the term hybrid, which interchangeably with blended. So a, a blended model can include a staggered approach to opening and without having uh, specifics as uh, definitions as to what they consider to be a blended or hybrid model the interpretation at this point my understanding the interpretation is that can be considered a blended option so so uh, I, I, I I can't be the only one that's confused by this no nope. high so so what is the state or the Department of Education what term are they using hybrid blended they use scattered? blended they use, they blended. use blended, but they're not defining what blended is at this point. What it says, what the state, what the state guidance says is blended hybrid learning model is any model in which the number of students in a school building is reduced to allow for social distancing. This may be accomplished in many ways, including split schedules, schedules that rotate by day or week, or similar approaches. For these recommendations, Blended learning also includes scaffolded approaches that treat grade levels in a different man, in a differentiated manner. 
But then the Department of Education. No, that's from the Department of Education. Right, but they also they had three clarification. They had you know yeah. three classifications. That's what they defined blended hybrid learning as, so which was one of their options. Those are the options. Or Both of the options meet that definition, yeah. and we chose scaffolded as opposed to all. But someone blended. just said that it's to be clarified, so we don't know if it meets that definition. Did someone over here say that it needed clarification? I think Julia just found the definition. I found the definition while we were sitting there. Okay, I, I'm just, I'm that just telling you, I'm just telling you what the what the State Department of this is. This has been available for less than 24 hours. That so, was my time yeah. off when you guys were answering questions. Do you have any other questions? Uh, yeah, I'm on. <laughs> okay, there's a three minute time. What's that? There's a three minute time. Right, but that's to talk. Not when you guys stumble over your words in, in answering questions, it's not docked on my time. Okay, so what are we down to? A minute now? What's that? Do, are we down to a minute? Is that where we are? Uh, I don't know. Go I, ahead. So Go I'm ahead. Sure Ask your next stopping question. Stopping every time I stop. It does. That's not the way that timer works. But okay, so we all respond. So, so go ahead. So, I just wanted to be you guys to be clear that you're going against the administration's recommendation. Yes. By a vote, by a vote of four to three. Yes. That's so, what happened. We don't know. What are the ramifications of that? But going against the department, what the what? Are the ramifications? With the, there's none from the Department of Education based on that definition that they've just, that that has been laid out. Unless the state gives us new recommendations or more guidance that countermands either what they've given us so far or gives us further recommendations, that means we aren't we aren't meeting the requirements, well, the recommendations that are being given to us by the Department of Ed, and then we have to change the way we're doing things. And there's still any ramifications, it's not a mandate. Correct. There's no ramifications because it's not a mandate? Correct. It's a recommendation. It's a recommendation, it's not a mandate, so there's no ramifications. Correct. Did we know one? No, there are. Change more. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hi, come on in. Hi. Hi. My name is Angela Farrell. I live on Wall Street. Um, I just wanted to kind of clarify what I heard. In the beginning of the meeting, it was said that you would not be able to social distance, like the recommendations for kids if they go to school. <clears throat> Was that correct? That you wouldn't be able to follow the, the guidelines the, for social distancing? Um, the, one of the teachers made the comment that it could be board problematic. Board. The board didn't. Mm -hmm. Is the school going to be able to follow those guidelines? No. Well, there's Virtual options. So right. some people have already elected that, so they'll be reduced number of students in case of time with that option. Right, but you can't guarantee this, that the guidelines will be met, right? Well, actually, we were, we were, Preston, am I allowed to say the number? Yep. Yeah, I mean, we were told before the meeting that 412 people have actually signed up out of the 3,100 already have signed up the virtual. So that it takes you know, a little bit off. Yeah. Is that like through, I guess, K through 12 then, and not just, I guess, I guess, K through 5? There so were the large, large number was in the end. Yes, that's correct. And then um, will um, K through 5 be able to do like a week on, a week off, or is it just going to be? Then in school, or right now, it's in school. In school, so they don't have that option to be back. So if they were to get sick, then they would do the digital learning, the daily digital learning, right? Would that still be? Either virtual, right? 
Of course, of course, if you have a child that's ill, the, uh, our regular like um, providing of um, homework the way we do do for any illness, even if it's a long-term illness, would would be the way that would happen. If you are quarantining but well, then you'd be doing doing work virtually. Yes. Would what would the daily live streaming still, or is that not? Going to happen then. Is it going to be safer? Or safer? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, if the choices in our uh, individual learning plan, I guess that, that is part of that plan. Okay. Now, I want to be clear that live streaming doesn't mean that a student is in front of their computer seven and a half, eight hours a day watching a class and a teacher and all the engagement that's happening in that classroom. That's not how it works. The teacher has uh, the uh, control of, of the device that after a direct instruction environment you can turn it off and the students engage in the classroom with one another and the students that are in the digital world would engage in the work independently. Okay. Uh, Will the schedule be coming out for that? So we know like how long it will be? Because I think as a parent that is the one thing that I'm trying to figure out if that option is better than Laser Virtual Academy, like how long, what the schedule is going to look like for my child. I, in, in the uh, the Laser Virtual Academy model, it's more an uh, asynchronous model where there is uh, virtually, uh, if any, very minimal engagement uh, in a live stream environment. Whereas in the digital, there is a portion of it that would be a live stream environment. Sure. I'd like to get a clarification on switching back and forth between in person and the ways of learning. Are there parameters on that? And is it semester and quarter or, or what? How do we guide that? That someone can go from in person to digital or digital or back? Well, what is the guidance? I, I think that depends on what the situation is, whether a student's quarantined or not. Um, in that, in that type of uh, environment, and you know, it's, it's individual based. But it's whether or not, uh, are we providing an option to go, you know, a month virtual and then come in to school, or are we not doing that? That wasn't part of the, the model, it was built to be K to 5 in person. Mm -hmm. Now, the circumstances, the student needs to be quarantined because of an illness, um, that's that's a different case scenario. But if if in this staggered approach, K to five in person means students choosing that option would be K to five in person. Can I ask one more question? Yeah. Um, so you might have go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's fine. Um, if the scaffolding or the funding doesn't work and Daniel would have to go full virtual, my question would be: Do you then go to the red schedule, even though it's not? with a red face, was that the schedule that would be placed if you were full virtual? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Hi. Hello, Shane Carmel, 830 Hydro Town Road. Tonight, you've changed your code from the five days to the scaffolding. Um, the board members wanted to follow some kind of guidelines uh, from set up by the state. And one guideline that everyone refuses to talk about is sports. The state has clearly said there should be no sports. The IOPA was all upset about it. Universities were upset about it. Some colleges canceled their sports. Some schools canceled their sports. What is Danny Boone planning on doing? If you change your vote because of the guidelines of the state to go into a scaffolding, if you guys would feel bad if something would happen not following the guidelines, but there is one thing they were very specific about. There should be no sports. What are, how come you guys aren't 
discussing the sports program. There's full contact football, full contact basketball, wrestling. I mean, there's no social distancing. I mean, your kids are going to go to other schools and get sick. And it doesn't show up right away. Maybe three, four days, they're in the school building infecting other kids. But we're going to scaffold and protect the kids and then let them go practice every day, travel all over the county. Why are we still doing sports? Okay. You guys want to follow the ride? I, 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 well, that first of all, it's a strong recommendation that Governor put out. Uh, it's not an advocate. It's a strong recommendation from Governor not to have sports. The PILA is pushing back on that. They voted 30 to right. So it's a delayed two weeks while they're discussing. And the challenge I have with that is if you do that, the kids are just going to play club sports. The kids just can't afford it and have them doing it all summer. So they're, they're going to be playing anyway. So we're waiting. Um, currently, we've had an extracurricular meeting at 5.30 today. And we're, my understanding is we're waiting for the PIAA more guidance mm -hmm. from on what, what we're going to do. The, the state was very clear, though. The state was very clear. I mean, the, governor, the, 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 the governor, the governor is clear. Is clear. Yes. The legislator is not so much. So I, my, and we didn't get we didn't get we didn't get recommendations from the Department of Ed or Department of Health on it. We we were working through the channels, the department, the the, the um, superintendents, and the athletic directors are making more um, conservative recommendations to the Berks IA um, that will then be transmitted to PIAA when they have their next meeting. And um, you know, the, 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 the NAA has has suspended the start of fall sports until the 24th of August. So that was uh, what they had come out with, and what they indicated is the health and safety plans for athletic and activities was board approved. Uh, is they continue to be followed for voluntary workouts through that that point in time between now and that August 24th date. Anticipate that they will be meeting uh, the IAA. It is their intent to be meeting with the um, governor's office to get some additional uh, specifics with regard to his strong recommendation that he made publicly. The uh, superintendents have uh, met and discussed even previous to uh, the August 24th date to extend the start date even longer into September beginning September and continue the voluntary workouts there. Now, that's a local decision at the BCIA level, and then there's the PIAA, which would trump that uh, decision. Uh, so we're still waiting for further guidance. But is it a little bit hypocritical that you want to follow the guidance of opening the school and having kids back in five days a week, and then say, well, there's a strong recommendation from our governor, no sports, and then just keep allowing them to not social distance, travel together, exchange bodily fluids, because you know there's sweat and everything else they have flying all over the place when they're playing basketball. Excuse me, excuse me, I don't remember the time call. We didn't vote yet. There's no discussion. There's no discussion. That's why I, keep, I brought it up last week. I asked for it to be on a survey and it wasn't. I keep bringing it up. No one's talking about it. So well, once again, I, I'm bringing I, it up. I, I, I said, I think you should come to the extracurricular meeting. So we have an extracurricular meeting at 5 30. So the next time there's an extracurricular meeting, come to that and express your concern to us. And that is what we're talking about in those meetings. I'm sure it's going to be something we're going to vote on. So yeah, right, yeah, we don't this, have anything to vote on. It doesn't mean to vote on this one. Right. We have to vote on I have, I have a son who plays soccer, so I, I, I get it. So I have the daughter who plays sports too. Yeah, so I, I get it. I, I'm just that. bringing up, you know, you guys changed your vote tonight. Not all of it. Oh, Not all of this, and, and I understand it, but it was enough to switch it because of the guidance that you would feel guilty if someone would get sick, and you want to be as clear as possible as following the guidance. And one thing that was specific that had everyone in an uproar was there should be no sports. Parents can't come, 
the public can't come, and yet you have full practice going on right now in sports. It's and it's voluntary. voluntary. It's not so it's not full. But I do. But you're offering it. I I hear you, <laughs> and I heard you, and I read your emails, and I heard you last time, and. Um, your time's been up for a while, and we gave we gave you a lot of leeway. And um, when there is an opportunity for us to vote on it, we will. And I'll keep your thoughts in mind. And in the meantime, come to the next um, uh, extracurricular meeting. It's completely <laughs> empty, so, so it'd be nice to have somebody to watch. Okay. All right, thanks. Julie, Julie, is it fair to say that we didn't? But Don't encourage him. No, I'm just kidding. No, he didn't <laughs> him. No, but I'm just saying, we didn't vote that last vote based on what the governor said. These are this is the board of health. Yeah, it's this, the Department of Health. Right. Yeah, this this is different. I mean, the governor is just you know sending it out on Twitter. I'm not saying I'm not this is the guy, but you know it's it's a little different what we just voted on in the you know, Department of Health. Or, but I, I get it. Your concerns are not. I, I, I get it. I get you can't. Solve your concerns are not invalid. It's just it. It's uh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Cockle. How are you doing now? I'm feeling good. Oh, <laughs> I had a spike breath. I was going to have a heart attack up here. Last time. But anyway, you all know that I'm Linda Perez. I mentioned that the last time my address was 106. Um, I have to say thank you to all of you um, for doing what you're doing. Um, you know, you're, you're spending your time to come here and do this, and these are very hard decisions to make, so I thank you for that. Um, many years ago, I was standing up here uh, for, the full, for the fight for full day kindergarten, and I was really worried as a parent. And um, in retrospect, we got through it, um, and our kids are doing just fine. And they're going to get through it again. Um, we're going to have kids that are going to graduate as doctors, as nurses, as lawyers. So I'm not too concerned. I'm not too concerned about my sons because I know that I'm at home with them and I can help them. But there are parents who can't help their children. Um, so I'm concerned about those children. I've worked in the healthcare field for 20 some odd years. Um, and I can tell you that, you know, you do get, you can get this COVID. Kids are out right now, they're playing, they're having sleepovers, they're involved in club sports. Um, my sons are swimming, they are running, and they have not, they have not gotten out of the yet. Um, I've worked in the school setting, and I can tell you, um, as an occupational therapist, I've seen a lot of kids struggle who don't have a care involvement, and that's what I'm worried for. Um, so please consider them. Um, I know that we're making our vote today based off of what's going on today. We are in the moderate risk category, but next week we might be in a low risk category. Mm -hmm. And we might yeah. not be following the recommendations of our state. So, you know, I was all for going back to school. I'd still like for my children to go back to school for the mental well-being for them. Um, and I think that there are ways that you can allow children to go to school and have online services as well. So, um, I don't know. I think there's a committee of a whole meeting again in two weeks. You can vote anytime. You can vote as much as you want. Um, but I know there's a lot of preparation that goes into it. As for sports, like I said, um, you need that for the, the mental and well-being as well. Um, and again, my sons have been swimming for the whole summer. They've had sleepovers. Um, I'm in a healthcare field, and I'm allowing my children to do this, and they have not gotten sick yet. And they could get sick, but if they do, the risk of fatality is very, very low. They'll get sick. They may get a cold. Um, so, and then again, transportation. <laughs> Please consider the transportation. Um, I, I love to take my children to school. I just put them in a little small bus. So if I can take my one school to my one child middle school, and then quickly went over to the high school and take him there, that would be wonderful. So thank you. Thank you, thank you everybody. Thank you. Is that something we can consider? Changing the times. Starting time, yeah. Staggering the times so that the parents could have the option of driving to school instead of. You, there, there is a lot of moving parts here, and you're you're asking me to tell you a yes or no right now. No, and I, I I can't make that promise or, or that because it's, whatever decision is made, something else comes up that has a domino effect. 
So, um, I mean, we can look into it, but I can't guarantee you that's something. That's all you can ask. Then we can look into it yeah. because it seems like, it, it just seems like something I can understand that you don't want them riding the bus right now. And so the ability or give them a choice. For right, sure. give them the choice that they'd be able to take their children if they don't feel comfortable with them riding the bus. And we also understand as a board, you can't make a decision now. It's just. No, you have a lot on your plate. Is that true? It's just something I would. We just flipped. I know. You just flipped the page. <laughs> He's He's like, you have page four. He's like, are you kidding me? Bob, Bob, Bob just passed out in the back. Bob, 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 Bob
then I'm concerned that we're still doing K to five full return because we essentially really are. And while we may have some less numbers, which I recognize, um, also when, when we signed up for that virtual option, it was sign up for virtual so that you have that option. Whether you're considering sending your kids to school full time, but you want to be signed up in case you need to fall back on it, sign up for the virtual option if you're planning on hybrid and you want your kids to have both options, or sign up for virtual if you're planning for full virtual. So while we have 412 that are saying we'll do virtual, that really might not still be a true number because a lot of people did sign up just because they wanted to be on that email list of having virtual. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just to clarify, I had four twelve was people that have actually already signed up. It wasn't just in the survey. Right. I'm sorry. They, they've actually all actually signed up. Yes, correct. And I did too. I did too. But I was signing up hoping that it would be the high print. Okay. Thank you. Can I just ask that just a quick question? I mean, is that possible that like after tonight's vote, I mean, this lady right here that decides that she wants to go virtual with her kids, is that? even on the table, that they can, they can still go virtual. They can still go virtual. Mm -hmm. So that at least, that's still, a, that's still an option. I did sign up for virtual. Okay. I, I, did, I, I, I just didn't know if it would be virtual hybrid, virtual full virtual. I just wanted to have it depending on what Yeah, fair enough. I just wanted to just ask. We have a couple more standing outside. No? Okay. okay. No, no, I, I get it. I'm Jennifer Cook. I'm from 203 Windwood Bank. Um, my questions are in regard to digital learning and class sizes. I have a soon to be third grader. And with the digital learning, a lot of what I've heard from other parents is that they can pick and choose what days they come to school. There's a lot of confusion that it's the how often and how much. So class size, really one day could be 30 and the next day could be five. And that is a concern because then we're not doing a lot of social distancing. And it's a lot of inconsistency as well for the children that are in the classroom. I've heard the same uh -huh. question from a lot of people, and I'm going to throw that to um, Mr. Like, McKnight. I just think there needs to be clarity within the community. Agreed. Okay. Like, my child is going to whatever option we're hoping for. If you have any other questions after he answers the question, you can go ahead and do that. No problem. Yeah. I think Dr. Cooper spoke with a little bit earlier the original uh, intent. Um, we couldn't determine that until we knew which direction we were going to go. Right? So um, the technology has the flexibility to do whatever we want. However, the physical issue to manage becomes very difficult with students going in and out daily, right? So I um, think we said earlier that the group was about depending on the health diagnosis of the COVID base, for example, and obviously we get that that the students but we know that group said this kind of time if you're going to be in a blended model you're going to be in uh, staff. So that that the amount of time hasn't been determined now through staff one, one, if I can interject, one of the things we want to make sure that we are not doing is in a in that blended model, that hybrid model, and an AV, which is what the uh, board, the 612 model, the other one this evening, is to uh, is to take a step back on the mitigation efforts that we're trying to put in place with uh, in regards to safety, uh, the social distancing uh, recommendations to be 10 feasible. Um, extent possible and so on and so forth so it, if we're putting ourselves in, in a situation as a community we're starting to compromise that we're going to have to change the rules of the game and then i think you change that potentially what you're looking at in regards to virtual because parents a lot of them were planning on sending their kids and they're like oh well, i'll see even in case things get worse and the district doesn't do it but i'm planning on sending my kid day one so again i think number wise and thinking of social distancing it's very inaccurate when we look at Digital virtual learning to what potentially could be my son's class. That's yeah. what I just mean. We definitely need to firm up what the expectation is soon. Yes, I mean, people yes. signed up with very misconceptions. And yeah, now I get I you. I think we have invalid numbers to, to figure out what we're really doing within our school. Is my we designated the numbers in two ways. So, you know, the, the number of people who had interest was about 1,200. We know the numbers are actually closer to around uh, four. And I'm not disagreeing with that, but I've talked to people who have signed up with the intention of not using it as you are planning for them to use. And that's and they're telling me it's okay and they have emails from building principals. Some said sign up if you're pondering it, some didn't. There's a lot of advice going around every which direction. So as a community, I think it's not being used in the way that maybe as a board you thought it was going to be used and that needs to 
be addressed to make sure our classroom sizes are appropriately handled. It's one of my big concerns as a parent. And my second is just super for thought, as my eight-year-old, versus going four days and having a couple days off, I watched many of you today play with your masks, have them under your nose and be everywhere else, which is totally fine. But now just think about an eight-year-old trying to spend an entire school day, like for 10 days versus four days in that classroom, and then having some days off and working on schoolwork without his mask at home. So just, that was my last statement. I went to, you know, we're adults and we're struggling, so an eight-year-old is going to be way more comical for a much longer period of time. So something to think about when we're thinking about what we do with our kids. Thank, Thank you. you. Hi. Hi. Megan, almost. That's okay. That's okay. okay. Um, I just want to piggyback off what Jen said a little bit with the, the full in kind of for kid class. I'm, I'm pleased with the most uh, having at least a hybrid option for my other two. Uh, the full in for the kid five feels like it is going against the recommendations, obviously, of the administration, but also from um, Department of Health and everything. Uh, Berks County has 82 out of 100,000 cases right now that are uh, positive. Once we hit 100, then we go to that red uh, where we would have to be full virtual. That's 18 people in an entire county. I mean, that's not a lot. So my main concern is how do we seamlessly take these kids from one school five days a week and then say, okay, you're back home. We're right back at lunch. Uh, if we started in the middle, it's easier to go full in say January when things, flu season's over, you know, not every kid's got the, the call for the symbols, or to go full virtual, say November, when everybody's out sick. Um, I just, I think that just makes more sense. I realize we already voted, I don't know if there's gonna be another vote coming again in the future. But the uh, main reason I'm here, so we talked about 412 people signed up for virtual. I, I am one of the people that signed my three children up for virtual. It was my understanding, the way I interpreted it, was that we had to sign up for the virtual if we wanted that option. And at the time, those were the only two options. So now that hybrid is on the table, or scaffolded, is on the table, I want my kids to be uh, utilizing that option. Are we able to make that change? Is it going to be uh, like a big switch in the numbers? Like, I, I just don't know how that's gonna work for people like me and I believe with Jen, who want our kids to be. Uh, we we could be in a we could be in a situation where we're uh, significantly understaffed in one place or another. If we um, if all of a sudden everybody decided to switch from one version to one from from um, um, being on an, on an all online to being in school or hybrid or from being in the hybrid to all virtual. Um, so there have to be some guardrails on that. But right at this mo moment, we don't know what that's going to be. Whether it's going to be two weeks' notice, whether it's going to be once a quarter, we don't know. Uh, no, I'm sorry, you misunderstood. Oh, yes. I signed up for virtual. Yes. I don't want to be all virtual. That's never what I want. So, but so if you make so if you make that change before, if you if you notify the school of the change you want to make before school starts, then you won't be locked into it. That's. that's nice. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So, but if you waited until like the second day of school, that would be more of a, that would be a pro and wanted to change. That's a problem. Right. But but um, but if you but if you contacted um, the, um, your principal or to professional development, not or you principal. You would work through the principal. Yeah. Contact your principal. Tell them that you want to make a change, but do it before school. Um, the before the 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 um, some of the prep that they're doing isn't going to change. But some of it is, and so it's a good time to get that information so to them. Possible. Yeah. Okay. Yep. okay. Contact the principal mm -hmm. for each school mm -hmm. for each child. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yep. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Do I have? A uh, motion to adjourn? Yes. Do I have a second? Yes. Okay, we're adjourned. Do you want to take?
take five before we come back? Is that is that necessary for anybody other than me? <laughs> uh, okay. So um, anybody who's staying, we'll be back um, in a couple minutes. Uh, depending on how many people leave, we might be able to bring more people in this room.